So welcome to Techno Dad Life and my name is Jeff and so today I'm going to go over my attempt at installing Cat6 cable from my upstairs to my downstairs where my new home studio is. Let's just say it wasn't pretty. So first let's show you the spot. So upstairs next to where my internet uh, enters my house I have a network cabinet now and so from that I want to run a line that's going to go down the side wall and so that side wall will come down here right into the basement sort of right over here behind me there's a nice solid wall here and so first thing I did was look at what tools I needed pretty simple so we need a drill a hole saw, screwdriver, uh, actually a super long drill bit to go through the wall, and then uh, some different things like a plate for the ethernet and then a ethernet plate adapter, so an RJ45. And instead of doing a press down uh, ethernet jack, uh, what I did is just get a jack that you actually plug the cable back into the uh, if you have an RJ45 connector on it, you can plug a cable in the front and then uh, plug a cable on the other side. And so I wanted it to be like a uh, patch panel where the RJ45 just plugs into the back and then we can do a short adapter that goes to the front and goes into our switch down here in the basement. So the first thing that I did is actually measure out on the wall and make sure there was no electrical behind it. Uh, so there's no electric lines running in that area. And then I came down here into the basement and sort of measured out no electrical appliances or anything going in that area as far as I can tell. All the wiring is down below, so everything should be fine. Or at least that's what I thought. So as I was measuring, so this wall right here that, uh, so this wall right here should be what I thought was a load bearing wall because it seems to be right underneath the little wall that's upstairs there. And so then after lots of careful measuring, I went back upstairs and started drilling and I missed that part. So now the house that I live in is about 150 years old. And so at that time in my part of the country, uh, houses were made a little differently. And so generally the older walls are what's called plath on lasters or horsehair plaster on lath. And so basically what it is is they put maybe one or two inch boards, space them with a few millimeters in between, and then they got plaster, mixed it up with horsehair, and then plastered over it. And so that was a very, uh, at that time, efficient way to make a wall. And then when those, uh, those walls are generally very uneven. And so nowadays what people do uh, when those walls start cracking because they're so uneven, they actually put something else on top of them. And so in this case, what they did is just put some uh, pressed uh, veneer board sheets over it, which were dark brown and which we have painted uh, light yellow right now. But that made for some interesting drilling. So when I drilled out this hole, if we look at the pictures and the little measurements there, all together, there was about an inch, inches worth of material to drill through. And so nowadays that is very uncommon. But the when I was using the hole saw, basically the uh, wood on the outside was easy to cut through. And then the plaster was pretty thick, but that was easy to cut through. But the batten underneath the plaster, which the plaster was attached to, was actually hardwood. At least it seemed to be. And so that was actually very difficult for the hole saw to cut through. 
So we were sort of grinding away there. And this created actually another difficulty. So being so thick, uh, I of course drilled out another hole to get it about plate size so we could go through there. But then when I actually tried to put the drill bit through, which is flexible a little bit, the material was so thick that it couldn't, I couldn't get it down to the uh, base plate underneath where the floor level is in the wall. And so I actually had to drill out that hole at an angle so that I could actually get the drill in there to drill through. Once uh, I got the drill bit in, then the most important thing is remember to wear safety goggles and actually you're supposed to wear gloves because uh, you hold on to part of the drill bit when you're actually pushing it through the wall. Now what ended up happening is, so again, because there seemed to be a lot of hardwood in this house, it was very slow going through all that material. And then basically I got through that material and punched through and then it hit something else. Uh, but it didn't seem, it seemed sort of flimsy, so I just pushed, pushed through and then it went all the way through. So then I came down to check on my good work and I went over to the wall here and there was no hole through the ceiling or the wall or anything. So I went around into my utility room and checked there and I found that the drill bit had gone through a heating duct. So I had punched a hole straight through and uh, so what I did is started to, and, and actually I missed a few wires coming out, both the cable wire and an extension cord that somebody had put there. Again, this is an old house that's sort of patched together. So the next thing uh, I decided to do was take a look inside of that heating duct because the drill bit shouldn't have come out, which someplace that's like two feet away from where we started drilling. And so what I did is I found some screw panels on one part of the heating duct and so I took those off. And so when I looked inside, what I saw was besides the drill, a cable line running through that duct, a telephone line, and also a new uh, power line that had been run through that duct. And I just so happened to miss all of them somehow. So after thinking about this overnight, what I decided to do was actually pull the line through. So I taped up the Cat 6 cable onto the end of the drill, push that through the hole to get the drill out of the way, first thing. And then I had to decide what to do with the cable after that. So basically at this point my options are, wait, I should take a step back. So when I looked into the duct, I saw a few cables that weren't supposed to be there, a cable line, a power line, telephone line. And also what I noticed is when I looked into that duct, it doesn't actually seem to be going anywhere. So it goes from the furnace into there, blows into there, and then there is a cutout in the floor where you can see the line, the Cat 6 line is coming down. And then there's also, that is the cable line, I believe there. Otherwise, so, it seems to be blowing hot air into my wall. And so what I'm going to guess, because the, the panel there, the heating duct had a cutout in it and actually was ripped a little bit, I'm going to guess when they put in the cable line, they went through that panel and actually took out that little bit of floor to get the cable can, cable, cable, cable into the wall to get into the living room. That's my guess. So uh, you probably, you don't know this, but I'm probably on vacation right now when I did this. So basically my choice now was to drill another hole through one of the support beams to get into this room. 
uh, because that heating duct is basically, if here are the rafters, it's just a piece of metal that is stuck on there and the heat blows through it. So it's not a proper, you know, heating duct for our age. It's just what they used to do in the old days. So my choice is to dra drill a hole through a, a support beam to get into this room or uh, just seal everything back up, try to seal that hole a little bit, and then just come over here, drill a hole in the wall, call it done until I get back from vacation. So I decided to drill a hole in the wall, tape everything back up, screw everything back together, and I'll deal with it on vacation. So that is the proper way of not how to install CAT6 cable. So my recommendations for you if you have an old house is to not assume things are as they where they should be, you know, so it seems like that wall should be right here and then from upstairs, so then downstairs this would be the support wall. But in my house that is not the case. There was actually no support over that wall. And then uh, actually what I noticed is there's a newer beam put in that goes directionally this way rather than this way that supports the corner at least of this wall upstairs. So it was a problem and somebody fixed it sort of in the past. So that's how not to install CAT6 cable. Hope you found it helpful or at least learn from my mistakes. You take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye.